Welcome into Sports Memos Betting Podcast for June 3rd. We're breaking down the NBA Finals here, Wednesday night's game with Teddy Covers. Also some uh, MLB for tonight's slate as well. we got a short card. We'll hit them all here. Teddy, welcome into the podcast. How are you? Yeah, great to be here, uh, Drew. How are you on the first Monday of June? Early June. Welcome to June. I'm doing good, man. June is uh, my favorite, well, one of my favorite months. It's summertime. It's my birthday month. So uh, hopefully it's a good month in terms of uh, more winners than losers, Teddy. And I'm feeling it. Uh, so overall, I'm feeling good. Also, another thing, Teddy, I'm feeling good about is your NFL season over under win report. 87 and 35. That's over 70%. Since 2001, been good of late, too, off of a 5-0 and year, Teddy, and that's up at SportsMemo.com. Guys, a reminder, it's up there, it's available, it's uh, something I definitely recommend jumping on, the analysis you can use for the full year. This is something that uh, will put you ahead of the odds makers in a lot of cases, and the record speaks for itself. Over 70%, Teddy knows his stuff, he's got a, uh, a uh, kind of a, an angle on this market, so to speak, the NFL season over under win report at sportsmemo.com. Teddy, is there anything you want to throw out about this report where you are in the process of getting it released? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm working NFL every day right now. Um, you know, and that's standard for this time of year. You know, May and June are heavy NFL months for me. Uh, and they should be because one of the reasons I like doing my NFL work now as opposed to college work now, boy, between the end of spring practice and the start of uh, fall practice in college. It seems like a lot happens. And when you focus on what happened in the spring, you're missing a lot of stuff. And that's not the case in the NFL, where the roster turnovers are, you know, is relatively minor compared to college teams. So when you do your NFL work in the spring and summer, you're getting fairly accurate info based on what's going on, whereas in college, it seems like there's more things that change between spring and fall. That's why I do my NFL work first. Uh, and then, you know, as we get into July and August, I'll focus more uh, on the college stuff. Uh, and when it comes to the process for the NFL, I mean, literally, uh, I'm not saying it's like clockwork, but this is something I've been doing now for 20 years. I've got a process and it works. Obviously, you talked about the track record, you know, and then five and oh last year and 16 and four the last five, uh, four years and 26 and eight the last seven years. I mean, it's been really consistent all the way through uh, 13 and two with the big tickets. I mean, it's been you know, this is the best report that I do. I don't know how else to say it. And the best thing about it is that, of course, it's not just the pick. Yeah, you'll get the pick and you'll get the you know season win total, but you'll also get the analysis that goes with it. And that's going to give you stuff that you can use all season long. So I know it's a report uh, that a lot of people that don't bet every week like because they can get down prior to the season and then they're in action on those teams all year long, basically at every game that they play. So, uh, you know, it's... It's a good report. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. If you're interested, uh, check out the website, sportsmemo.com. It's right up there on, on the front page, on his handicapper page. And, guys, if you use the coupon code NFL Podcast at checkout and you get his uh, – either his college football NFL full season or just his NFL full season – one, it will include the NFL season over under report in the full season package, but also with the coupon code NFL podcast at checkout will take $200 off the full season serv- service for Teddy Covers. So it's a great savings. You get a lot with it. One one-time purchase and you're set for a while there. Coupon code NFL podcast for his full season service. Um, and it, it's also good for his one year all access as well, which gives you 365 days. So uh, remember that coupon code NFL podcast at checkout. Teddy, let's start. Let's talk some of this uh, NBA finals here. Goes 1-1. One, one. Back to California, not back to California, first time to California in this series. Toronto, Golden State, now we're seeing a way different number here, Teddy. Minus six on the Warriors, 212 and a half as far as the total. Um, I'm liking the Warriors again here in game three, Teddy. How are you feeling about the Raptors-Warriors game three? And it's fine because you just said six, and I'm like, no, no, it's five and a half everywhere. You know, in the last half hour, it's gone from five and a half to six everywhere, literally, uh, since the last time I looked. And I think I looked, I've got to be less than half. When the heck did this line move? Uh, (laughs) uh, I'll pull it up. About uh, 9.56 a.m. and thereabouts, uh, 9.57 a.m. So, yeah, a little bit more than a half hour ago, uh, which shows that if you're sleeping uh, on some of this stuff, it can cost you. Uh, I'm locked and loaded with a big ticket for game three uh, of the uh, NBA finals. You can get that. 
or right now a five percenter, obviously, uh, on nine dollar Monday for just nine bucks. That will go back up to thirty bucks tomorrow. So take advantage of that a special offer today. Uh, we can certainly talk about what happened in the first two games of this series. And really, you know, we've seen. I, I boy, I mean, look, I, I cast an under bet in game two. That's as lucky as I'm ever going to gash a bet. And there have been a couple of those this post. And that's how you go on a ridiculous run. One of my 10 and 3 last 13, uh, 16 and 8 last, uh, no, it's 18 and 9 last 27, and uh, something like 49 and 32 since before the All Star break. I mean, it's been pretty darn good in the NBA for a while. Uh, and the postseason's been very, very good. Uh, obviously, you know, with that 77% run uh, over the last couple of weeks, uh, 10 of the last 13. But I cashed an under ticket that I didn't deserve uh, last night. No question. Uh, but when you have four scoreless minutes in the fourth quarter with the game 106 to 98 and it just stays there, uh, sometimes you get lucky. And we got real lucky uh, with that one uh, cashing last night. All that being said, you know, some of what happened down the stretch last night has potential to carry over the game three. We talked about Golden State and the injuries. Clay Thompson gets hurt uh, last night. He's saying he's going to be fine. Uh, Cousins plays a full game uh, and looks good in doing so. But now Looney's another guy going down. It uh, doesn't look like Durant, uh, if he plays at all, is going to be a factor uh, in this series. So uh, there's a little bit of concern, or at least there was initially, uh, about the Golden State injury situation. But obviously, as we've seen uh, over the course of the last half hour with the money across the board, a big sharp move on the Warriors, uh, taking all the five and a halfs out. Um, as uh, clearly the markets expect, a Golden State, maybe not to be at full strength, but uh, at least to have Thompson uh, and Looney uh, good to go. Which matters because, of course, Toronto, I mean, they only played eight guys uh, in uh, the, the loss uh, last night uh, for a team that's been, you know, Nick Nurse has been going deep into his bench, and that wasn't the case. Although it'll be interesting to see that quirky defense they played in the fourth. They played that box and one on Steph Curry yeah. in the fourth. Curry was, Curry was held scoreless in the fourth quarter, you know, and, and the Warriors were held scoreless, obviously. For an extended stretch during crunch time, their defense was phenomenal last night and really uh, was a difference in the ballgame. Uh, Siakam came back to earth. Um, when we look ahead to game three, again, the total wise, and boy, but that was a bad result for the total landing on 213 last night. Open 215, bet as low as 212, bounced around 212 and a half, 213, 213 and a half, 214 on game day, and then lands right on 213. You could have cashed, uh, and better betters cashed, you know, both sides of that, or whatever side they played, they cashed, and that's never uh, good for the books. Uh, we've seen a little bit of under money coming here for game three so far. And again, I'm not shocked by that at all. You know, we uh, the pace hasn't been torrid. Last night's game was on an overpace largely because the refs called a ton of fouls in the first half. Uh, and we saw clearly during crunch time, both teams have an idea of what to do defensively. And the market's certainly reflecting that with uh, the game three number. Yeah, that box and one defense that you bring out. Do you see that a lot in the NBA? I know you follow the NBA a Never. lot closer. Yeah, I don't either. Well, I mean, they're in, they're, they're, I mean, game one, the Warriors used this, I mean, switch and blitz defense. It was like a gimmicky defense to try to uh, uh, shut down Kawhi. Um, you know, and they would, you know, you, you start the possession using one defense and try to get the ball out of uh, Leonard's hands and then switch defenses within possession. That didn't work. They didn't try it again for game two. Uh, we saw the boxing one for uh, Golden State. I mean, we're seeing both coaches try to make adjustments, you know, based on what they're seeing. And, and we could see some more gimmicky defenses before this series is through. Yeah, no, it's an interesting chess match going on with both coaches, obviously, in the NBA Finals, two great teams, and it's... Uh... And, uh, sorry, just just one, one last factor that's worth considering. You have extra time between games, you know? Where is it 10, game, 10 days before game one, then three, two, two days off before game two, and then two more days off before game three? The only time this whole series, where it's day on, day off, play the next day, is games uh, three and four in Golden State. Uh, and everything else is... Take a couple of days off and take a couple more days off. So that allows coaches to put in a little bit more game planning than they would, uh, obviously, even during the uh, uh, most of the postseason, let alone the regular season. Yeah, no, that's a good tidbit as well. Um, extra time, so extra time to prepare. Um, Teddy, let's talk a little MLB, but uh, first, guys, do want to recap. We got the coupon code NFL Podcast for Teddy's NFL college football full season, just his NFL full season, or his one year all access. 
coupon code NFL Podcast at checkout will take two hundred dollars off. And of course, you do get his NFL season over under win report in that um, record speaks for itself over seventy percent since two thousand one. Also, want to give a shout out to Teddy's NFL full season last year thirty nine and twenty four sixty two percent up over 60 percent in the nfl for a full season and my favorite stat here 58 percent over the last four years in the nfl that is uh not many people can say that nfl is a tough sport to bet a sharp market he's 178 and 128 for 58 percent over the last four years in the nfl recommend his nfl full season service also the college football as well for a discount at sportsmemo.com coupon code nfl podcast at checkout let's talk tonight's uh mlb here teddy we got one game going early in about uh two and a half hours from when we're talking right now total of nine heavy favorite cubs with john lester on the hill minus 165 at most shops right now uh, the cubs stink right now you know they've lost eight of their last ten uh, the last four games, they've got uh, eight runs and 41 strikeouts. <laughs> you know, below the Mendoza line, hitting less than 200 during that span. Um, Lester hasn't been good. The Angels are uh, won seven of the last nine. They're a game uh, under 500 right now. And yet the money's pouring on Chicago. Why they hate the travel spot for L.A. And I understand why the Angels are in this stretch of three and a half weeks where they're on the West Coast. But oops, they're scheduled day off today. Now they have to fly to Chicago for an early start game and then fly back. You can understand that it's an issue. I think it's a lot of times an issue, a bigger issue the next day than it is for the day they travel. Uh, and, of course, L.A.'s going with an opener today in Bedrosian. It's not something they do. Uh, I would expect LeBlanc to pitch uh, most of the game, but the markets don't know what the heck's going on there. So we've seen Chicago money. Not my money. Uh, not even close. Angels are playing better baseball than the Cubs right now. Uh, and to be uh, L.A. be the only way I could look in this one. Yeah, Teddy, uh, you bring up the travel spot, L.A. Um, having to go to Chicago, then back out to the West Coast, just a standalone game here at Wrigley. And you, you brought up the next day it affecting the team more. I 100% agree with you. I'm waiting, I'm waiting for this bet, bet online opener. Um, it still isn't open on the Oakland L.A. Angels on tomorrow night's slate. And I uh, just wanted to give everybody a warning out there. There is no line out there, but uh, I could definitely see Oakland taking money. So watch out for that on. Uh, well, Canning's been a guy who's been a, I mean, he's been a wise guy favorite. OK, interesting. So it'd be interesting to see uh, where the where the money moves on that. I don't think they'll price L.A. too cheaply tomorrow, especially. I mean, that was a bad series the A's had over the weekend against the Astros. They had, you know, they had looked forward to that series big time, and to see them get swept at home and losing yesterday in extras the way they lost is. It'd be interesting to see how Oakland bounces back. I'm not convinced tomorrow's going to be a horrible spot for uh, the Angels either. Might be Wednesday <laughs> uh, before L.A. is, is truly jet lagged. Well, you bring up a great point. It's a it's a fascinating handicap here with Oakland Montez on the hill versus Canning L.A. Angels uh, at home. Uh, if you had to pick from where the opener goes to who takes money, would you say the Angels take money or Oakland takes money in tomorrow night's game, Teddy? I, I honestly don't know because the markets have like Canning. They're not going to like the spot for the Angels. So I, I don't know which of those two is going to take center stage. Interesting. Okay. Multiple facets at work here. That will be an interesting one on tomorrow night's slate. We got three more games all late night here on the West Coast. We got uh, the Dodgers at the Diamondbacks. Walker Bueller, one of my favorite names in all of MLB, on the hill for the Dodgers versus Robbie Ray coming from the left side. Eight and a half being the total. Minus 145 to minus 150. That's the Dodgers' favorite on the road, Teddy. Yeah, no one's going to like my MLB analysis today because I'm not even close to it. I mean, the closest I was to play anything when I would have played the Angels. Uh, I'm not close to playing this game. Uh, <laughs> uh, I really wasn't. Obviously, Bueller uh, coming off a rough outing against the Mets uh, last time out. I was mad. The Dodgers scored nine runs and didn't cash for me on the run line with Bueller on the hill. Uh, prior to that, his you know three previous starts, he's given up a total of two uh, earned runs, although his track record against Arizona, not quite as good. Uh, as uh, some of the teams uh, that he faces. Obviously, the divisional opponents know him better. Uh, and, you know, it's not like Ray is an easy guy. The D-backs played much better baseball this last week uh, than they played the previous. I mean, they were awful uh, uh, the previous week. And Ray uh, has a pretty good track record against L.A., but he's got some concerning numbers for me. This is a guy that pitched a lot of innings. He's not eating up innings anymore. His pitch counts are way high. You know, last time, couldn't get out of the fifth, 102 pitches. Previous time, couldn't get out of the sixth, 106 pitches. 
knocked out after four the time before that. They, you know, they, but the D-backs have been winning for him, but the walks are up, the pitch counts are up. This is not vintage Robbie Ray right now, and uh, you're certainly uh, the market's showing that today with the money coming on the Dodgers. But you know, it's hard for me to bet against the Dodgers. That team just, you know, five in a row, nine out of ten. Um, they're the class of the National League, and they're showing it just about every single day. Yeah, that lineup is for real, no doubt about it. Also, you bring up the fact that Robbie Ray's walks are up. The Dodgers, number one in MLB in uh, walk rate versus lefties, so I could see him having a lot of runs here. Also with Walker Bueller, it's rare that you see a pitcher with over a four ERA in his K to walk rate, he has 58 Ks and only 12 walks. Those numbers aren't really matching up. So, of course, uh, the advanced analytics of the betting markets really liking Walker Bueller just to see, uh, I guess, uh, a better numbers overall from him in the future. So, yeah, let me. I mean, when you look at the advanced metrics on Bueller, I mean, they're <laughs> they're certainly reflective of those numbers. They're talking about the 401 ERA. Well, fielding and pitching is you know 3.38, the xFIP at 3.81. What they don't like about Bueller, his ground ball rate's not that high this year, and it was in the minors and in you know last year following his call up. So that's something that has been an issue for Bueller. Why is uh, why the markets aren't quite as hot as him as they might have been, given some of his strong track records. All right, Teddy, we got a, a 10-10 Eastern, 7-10 Pacific first pitch here. Philadelphia on the West Coast in San Diego. We got Nola versus Lauer, 7.5 being the total, minus 140-ish range for Philadelphia on the road. Any strong opinion here? This is a Nola versus Lauer. This is Bryce Harper versus Manny Machado, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I forget the starting pitches. This is about the hype, and it's funny. Because you look at their stats, you know Machado's what a 751 OPS. Uh, he's hitting 251 nine dingers. Harper an 847 OPS, uh, 11 dingers. You know, good. Neither one's gonna blow you off the field. But the two teams around them, you say, well, they pay 300 million bucks a piece for these guys. What are they? They're not. They're playing okay, but they're not playing like 300 million dollar men. But what they've done made everyone else around them better. <laughs> and that's certainly a factor. That's why we're talking about the Padres at this stage of the season above 500, which we haven't been able to talk about in I don't know how long. That's why we're talking about the first place Phillies, even after a lousy series uh, in L.A. against the Dodgers. They're still in first place. So, you know, the, the hype's going to come in the matchup. And look, both of these, they're uh, bet on versus bet on in terms of Nola uh, versus Lauer. Nola's been much better uh, after his rough start. Lauer's been brilliant. His last three starts, the Padres have won all three. Uh, you know, Nola's been real good. They what four and zero with a ERA under three. His last uh, five, he's got a good track record against San Diego. He's got a good track record at Petco. Everyone's got a good track record at Petco. Uh, but uh, you know, um, I thought the Phillies played a re- pretty lousy series uh, in LA, and in a lot of different ways. The bullpen got battered yesterday. The lineup was uh, dicey, and I'm not in any rush to lay a price for them here in San Diego. Uh, against a Padres team that they, they didn't have a great weekend. They got slapped around by Miami. But Lauer's bet on and San Diego. There's hope there, uh, which I haven't been able to say for the Padres in some time. So uh, that's a home dog play for me if I was going to get involved. But like I said, I wasn't real close to getting involved in this one. Uh, it's a pass on the MLB slate for me on Monday. Pass for Teddy Covers? Not for me. It's $9 Monday, and uh, my top play is on Philadelphia, San Diego, and late night action tonight. Check it out at sportsmemo.com. $9 Monday, all plays on Sports Memo, discounted to just $9, including Teddy Covers 5% in the NBA Finals, which tomorrow will go back to regular pricing, but today you can get it for just 9 bucks. we got Houston at Seattle to end it, Teddy. we got Martin versus LeBlanc. Um, late, late numbers popping up at bookmaker and, and bet online not seeing numbers across the board though minus 140 the opening number here houston lane on the road and i'm seeing uh, either nine and a half or ten for the total teddy yeah i mean the issues is that the mariners are gonna, I mean, now look if you're gonna make a bet on this game don't list your pitchers because we don't know who seattle i mean we, we literally do not know who seattle's gonna go with uh there's talk that leblanc is gonna they're gonna use an opener tonight and then leblanc's gonna come in afterwards um I don't know. I mean, LeBlanc is not <laughs> LeBlanc hasn't been any good. I don't like LeBlanc against the Astros lineup. And I mean, Seattle has been so bad. Remember, they're thirteen and two to open the season. They're twelve and thirty-five since. 
They're 16 games out of first place. They're in the last place. And they started 13-2. and two. <laughs> Scott Cervase went nuts yesterday after they got bombed by the Angels. Another error-filled ball. They lead the majors in errors. Uh, they lead the majors in most games, allowing 10 runs or more. Uh, Cervase yesterday, quote, some defensive plays, some things we didn't make good decisions on. Ended up turning into a big inning. Again, we've seen that. We played this game a few times this year. I've had about enough of it, quite frankly. When you don't throw strikes, you don't play defense, you don't make plays, it's hard to watch. You'll have ups and downs with the bat, but you'll have to make the plays and throw strikes. Uh, <laughs> when you don't, it's bad baseball. I know we're young in some spots and inexperienced in some other spots, but you have to continue to do the right things. It's about throwing it over the plate and catching the ball. Yeah, he's frustrated. I don't blame him for being frustrated. His team stinks. It's a kind of a bet on spot, maybe. <laughs> You're going to catch me betting on the Mariners against the uh, uh, Astros? No. <laughs> There's a legit class difference. Although Houston's lineup really has cooled off, you know, with all the injuries. Mm-hmm. With Altuve and Springer uh, and uh, uh, who's the third guy? Gosh, I'm killing myself over here. Springer's the main guy. What, 17 home runs over three? Oh, Correa. Oh, average. Yeah, Correa's yeah, 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 out. Correa, uh, you know, when Altuve, Correa, and Springer are worth something. And you look at their offensive numbers over the last 10 games – not even close to what they were doing before. They're struggling to get to four and five now. Uh, and yet, then Martin's, <laughs> I'm not going to miss Martin's any good either. So, um, but again, not a game that I'm uh, particularly close to getting the window with. But if you do play it, don't list your pitchers. Yeah, and Teddy, you bring up the, the listing of the pitchers. And in today's world with the openers, do you see the, um, in your opinion, um, do, do you think, see the sports books? doing anything in the future with these listing of pitchers and the bet not counting or any changes foreseeable in the future with how how the how the sports books grade these plays no i mean you as a better you have a choice every game you can choose to list pitchers or choose not to list the pitchers that's your call um i don't see the sports books make i, I don't see any we talk about rule changes mm-hmm. uh, it's hard to make rule changes and it's hard to make them stick because there's no official governing body and one book will do it but another book won't and this is what's happening in Vegas but that's not happening in Jersey and I'll look offshore uh, you know you don't see a lot of rule changes when it comes to betting so I would anticipate more of the same even with the openers now coming into uh, into into play okay interesting stuff there Teddy um, guys remember the coupon code NFL podcast at checkout for his full season anything really on sportsmemo.com for $200 off NFL podcast at checkout. Teddy, anything else you want to throw out before we shut this down? Yeah, thanks for taking time out of your day to, to hang out with me and Drew. We appreciate it. Best of luck tonight. Enjoy the games. And uh, I won't be here tomorrow, but you will right here on the Sports Memo podcast from sportsmemo.com. Absolutely. Monday through Friday, we will be back talking MLB with Dr. Chuck. Also some CFL with Andrew McGinnis. So stay tuned, guys. Best of luck with your bets. We'll talk tomorrow.